Hi, everyone. I'm Ashley Waxman Bakshi. Today is September 30th, 2024. This is the live daily briefing of the Israeli Citizen Spokesperson's Office. We are live on Instagram, X, YouTube, and LinkedIn, and available afterwards wherever you get your podcasts. Please start submitting questions in the chat, and as always, like and subscribe to help us reach a wider audience. Today is day 360 of the October 7th war. Here's something that the whole world should be saying loudly and clearly. UNRWA employed the head of Hamas in Lebanon. The head of Hamas in Lebanon worked for UNRWA. His name was Fateh Sharif. Sharif was a senior Hamas terrorist and also the head of the UNRWA Teachers Union in Lebanon. Israel just eliminated him in an airstrike. His identity was not a secret. He didn't sneak into UNRWA. His identity was public. UNRWA head Philippe Lazzarini knew that Fatah Sharif was a senior Hamas terrorist. He knew because he was told multiple times. In fact, anyone watching this broadcast would have heard our spokespeople talking about Sharif's position in Hamas. Hillel Neuer, the head of UN Watch, was a guest on Elon Levy's State of a Nation podcast, and he talked about it. We reposted a clip of Neuer today on our social media platforms. Check it out after this. Lazzarini knew, he knew, but Lazzarini refused to fire Sharif. Instead, UNRWA is trying to get legal immunity for its leadership. It's obvious that UNRWA and leaders like Lazzarini are complicit with Hamas. In the face of overwhelming evidence, they don't want to be held accountable. They should be held accountable. Lazzarini should be held accountable. The relationship between Hamas and UNRWA is well known. Hundreds of hardened Hamas murderers were on the UNRWA payroll. Thousands of Hamas affiliates were on the UNRWA payroll. Billions of dollars were diverted to Hamas money changers or laundered through Hamas via the theft of humanitarian aid. Hamas built a military base with a massive server farm underneath UNRWA's headquarters in Gaza City. UNRWA has nothing to say about this. UNRWA is Hamas's UN front group. UNRWA is Hamas. It's time to defund UNRWA and hold those like Lazzarini who collaborated with Hamas accountable. There is another big news item today. Israel is preparing for a ground operation against Hezbollah in Lebanon. That's what the Wall Street Journal reported. In fact, Israeli special forces have been operating in Lebanon to gather intelligence for weeks, according to the report. Remember how we got here. Hezbollah waged war against the people of Israel for a year, daily attacks with Iranian rockets, guided anti-tank missiles, and suicide drones. 60,000 Israelis fled their homes a year ago because of Hezbollah's attacks. These Israelis must be able to return to their homes safely. Israel's troops are ready on the border. If Israel enters Lebanon in a big way, remember, Israel does not want war with the people of Lebanon. Israel has been telling Hezbollah to back off for a whole year. Hezbollah did not get the message. What do you think it will take? Let me know in the comments. Everyone should understand how big the threat of Hezbollah is. Hezbollah had plans to do what Hamas did on October 7th, but worse. Hezbollah commandos were trained to cross the border, conquer villages, and massacre Israelis in their homes. Hezbollah joined Hamas's war on October 8th, while Hamas terrorists were still inside Israel. Hassan Nasrallah went to war for Yahya Sinwar. Nasrallah went to war for Sinwar, and he died for the regime in Iran. Nasrallah claimed that the reason Hezbollah existed was to protect Lebanon. Everyone can see that this was a lie. I have a question for every world leader. What are you going to do to help the people of Lebanon regain their sovereignty, disarm the local terrorist army that takes its orders from Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, make peace with Israel, and enjoy a better future? Up to this point, it seems that the answer is nothing. Now let's take some questions from our live audience on social media. There's a report in Reuters right now that says the Lebanese prime minister says he's willing to deploy the Lebanese army south of the Litani River and fully implement UN Resolution 1701. How confident do you feel about this pledge? I mean, I think the short answer is I'd have to see it to believe it. Uh, UN Resolution 1701, which was passed in 2006, called for Hez Hezbollah to disarm and to no longer threaten uh, the north of Israel. 
The Lebanese government has failed to implement it. The UN has failed to implement this resolution. So as I began this answer with, I have to see it to believe it. Do you have any idea who will be the next leader of Hezbollah and if there will be any difference in Hezbollah policy about attacking Israel? Well, hopefully the future leaders are um, kind of fearful to take that position right now, if you know what I mean. Um, I obviously don't know who will fill that position. I'm hoping no one will fill that position uh, because I am hoping that we won't see Hezbollah uh, regrouping, rearming, and um, endangering the north of Israel anymore. And as you asked in the previous question, hopefully we'll be able to see some kind of agreement between the Lebanese government and the Israeli government. And, you know, I'm going to be as optimistic to say that hopefully we could see Lebanon even join the Abraham Accords. Just recently, the Israeli Air Force struck the Houthis in Yemen for a second time. Do you know what sparked this decision of the Israeli government to strike the Houthis in Yemen and if there will be any response from the Houthis in Yemen? So the Houthis have been not only blocking the sea and uh, effect effectively being pirates and uh, harming trade for the entire world, but they've also been attacking Israel, sending ballistic missiles and suicide drones. Israel is very clear. You can't just send ballistic missiles and suicide drones and attack Israeli civilians without expecting Israel to retaliate. So I'm going to say um, on behalf of Israel to the rest of the world, you're welcome that we are taking care of the job that the, the whole world really should be taking care of, but Israel is doing it on your behalf. So you're welcome. This is a question from Instagram Live from someone in Toronto. Can you please elaborate on the aggression and ongoing firing of rockets from Hezbollah even after Nasrallah was eliminated? What is exactly the current threat from Hezbollah? So Hezbollah has um, what's estimated to be about 200,000 rockets and ballistic missiles. Um, first of all, I just want to say hi, a shout out to Toronto, my hometown. And um, just because the commanders, the leaders of the organization have been eliminated, it doesn't mean that the organization ceases to exist. They still have tens of thousands of terrorists operating. They have bunkers full of rockets and missiles aimed directly at Israel. And they, of course, they're still in chaos. They're still trying to regroup and figure out what's going to be the new chain of command. But they are still targeting Israeli civilians, Israeli communities every day, just as they have done since October 8th. And uh, unfortunately, as I predict, we're going to continue to see over the coming weeks. A question from our Instagram Live. Are there any updates on the whereabouts of Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar? And also, what is the latest news about the fate of the Israeli hostages who are still in Hamas's terror dungeons? So as of right now, um, I don't believe we know where he is. I believe that if we knew exactly where he, wa where he was, he would no longer be with us. There are rumors going around that he has lost connection. Um, there have been rumors that possibly he has been eliminated, but that is still yet to be confirmed. Regarding the fate of the Israeli hostages, my cousin Agam Berger being one of them, unfortunately at this point we don't see any um, negotiation happening or any public negotiation happening. Um, my hopes are that the Hamas leadership, Sinwar, in Gaza are seeing what is happening around uh, with all of the rest of Israel's enemies. We are taking them out and eliminating them one by one. Hopefully that should pressure them to come to the negotiation table and, and, you know, and, and, and finally strike a deal. It's important to say that we have um, many um, demonstrations here in Israel calling for the release of hostages. But I think it's been about 18 or 19 times now that there has been a ceasefire deal on the table, and it is Hamas that has time and time again said no. So you just got to keep on getting the word out around the world wherever you are, and we need to keep telling our leaders, especially in the Western countries, to pressure Hamas via Qatar and Egypt and uh, to, to get them to come to, a negotiate, to the negotiation table and to finally broker a deal. This is another question from our live stream. How are we going to influence world leaders to defund UNRWA? That is a great question. Go to the streets, 
Tell your leaders that you are no longer willing to see your tax dollars to fund terrorism, to bring chaos to the Middle East, to endanger the lives of not only the Israelis here in Israel, but also of Arabs in all the countries surrounding us. This UNRWA money is continuing uh, to, to train and indoctrinate terrorists for generations to come. If you don't want to see escalation, if you don't want to see this turn into a regional war, or God forbid, a world war, pressure your leaders to stop wasting your tax dollars to fund terrorism. This will be our final question today. We have a lot of people watching from all around the world, including people from Lebanon. Maybe they're also in the United States, Canada. What is your message right now to the people of Lebanon? So my message to the people of Lebanon is we don't want war with you. We never wanted war with you. In fact, Lebanon was fairly close to making peace with Israel about 30 years ago. We would like to stretch out our hand for peace. Help us, help us eliminate the radical uh, Islamists that are taking over your country. The Iranian uh, regime hijacking your country, your civilization in the name of nothing, in the name of just destroying the state of Israel. We stretch out our hand for peace. Help us, join us, combat the radicalism, the extremism, and uh, hopefully pressure your government. Tell them that you would like to join the Abraham Accords. So that's all uh, the time that we have today. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm happy to see you on our social media. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow at 3 o'clock Israel time, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like share and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dijabnik signing off.